Good evening and welcome to another edition of Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Derbyologist, and joining me again is co-host Capping with Candice. Candice here. Candice, this week we're going to go across the country and kind of take a look at some of the different stakes races. We've got a couple of winning your ends for the Breeders' Cup, and the first one is on the turf, and it's at Santa Anita, and I think uh, quite a few people have been anticipating this matchup. I think so, and even though it's a small field, just five horses here, I think this can really give us a sense of where this division stands. I think so far this year, this kind of mild turfer division has been really wide open, and we have a few major players in here, maybe most excitingly so being Bala Bali, who very nicely won his American debut. I was there that day, and you'd probably be hard-pressed to find a visually more impressive um, American debut victory in a, a while. Um, I'm going to go against him in this spot. I think he's plenty talented, but I kind of want to see him do it twice in a row. He had a long work to happen to that last race, so we know he was primed for that effort, and I want to see him back that up a little bit. So ultimately here I'm going with Talco. He finished second to him last time out. If you go through the track of data, Talca actually broke slow in the race, and automatically that put him at a tactical disadvantage compared to Bal Al Bali. But if you look at the finishing sectionals, they actually ran just about evenly for the, the closing three quarters of a mile. Talco was just a little bit faster, I think about seven one hundredths of a second. But that was after he made a very fast middle move that was about three tenths of a second quicker. That half mile to three quarters of a mile sectional, he was about three tenths of a second quicker than Bal Al Bali. So he had to make that move earlier because of his positioning after breaking slow. That put him at a disadvantage. I still thought he ran a really nice race. And he should get a setup here with Midnight Storm in the field who has some speed and Winning Prize who also has some speed and has blinkers on for this trip. But a really nice group. I think Talco offers the value. The only one I haven't mentioned yet is Seek Again who is perhaps has the most back class of anybody in this field. But I always get iffy about him on a mile. I love him at 9 and 10 furlongs, but this mile distance just seems to be a touch too short for him. So he's not one who I'd be using. But I think Talco is the play. Yeah, I think, you know, like you say, sometimes in short fields you do get uh, some trip trouble. So you can't always assume that in a short field you're not going to get trip trouble. And actually, I thought Bala Abali had a little bit of trouble that last race. And like you mentioned, uh, Telco as well. I think winning prize getting blinkers is going to be a key in this race because he's going to show some speed. Um, and he's and he's kind of the, the litmus test because you kind of know what you're going to get out of him. Ultimately, I decided to pick uh, Bala Bali just because I was so impressed with the last race. But I do have a feeling he could be a little over bet. And I'm not so sure uh, kind of how he trips out this race because the last time I, I think he, it, I mean, from looking at his running lines, uh, I envisioned him more as a mile and eighth, a mile and a quarter horse, and it's interesting to see him again in a mile race. Yeah, I know they kind of seem like they immediately talked about Arlington Million, so I'm kind of the same. I'm surprised to see him back at a mile. I did think he would be one who relished the stretch out, but, you know, he still is competitive in the spot. Maybe perhaps the best of him is yet to come over further distances, So. Yeah, Seek again, you know, he's kind of a tweener. He's, he's not really a sharp miler. Yet he has a hard time going 10 furlongs, and, and he kind of just has a way of getting into some trouble trips as well. So maybe if somebody can, you know, and of course, then the speed here that's kind of moving up in class, Midnight Storm, a lot of people were visually impressed with his last race. Yeah, I think as far as Seek again goes, like you said, he's kind of in between. I think his best distances are between the Breeders' Cup mile and Breeders' Cup turf distance, and that's where it gets a little tricky with him, and you have to put him on the cutback a lot with a smile which probably isn't his optimum trip. If anybody's going to benefit from a small field, I think he's the one, though, because like you say, he tends to get himself into a lot of trouble. He's a lot of times that horse that you see kind of flying late and then just gets stuck behind a wall. So it should be helpful to him here not to have so many horses. Um, Midnight Storm, like you said, was very impressive, lost out on the lead. I just think he's had a little bit more pace pressure last time than he had to have then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Four grade one horses, Midnight Storm, you know, if he runs well in this race, I think we have, you know, five legitimate grade one horses. So I'm looking forward to watching it and kind of starting to, you know, that older turf division is kind of wide open, especially in the mile, because I think a lot of people still think why is Dan's going to come back and we don't really know where he's at. So should be a fun race. And the next race is at Churchill Downs under the lights. Uh, they've carted four stakes races. And it's a win and you're in nine furlongs of Stephen Foster, a grade one. 
It is, and I think betting-wise, it's an interesting race because there's so many horses here that are big-name horses, but perhaps come here a little bit off form or off of long layoffs. Um, I think Lee and Opportunity certainly fit that bill of horses who always take money, but perhaps have a few questions to answer in this sort of a spot. Um, I ultimately landed on Noble Bird. I think that for him, he comes in here with very strong form, having won twice in a row before finishing second by head to Protonico in the Ali Sheba. The question with him is whether or not he'll stay this Melanate's trip, but I don't see tons and tons of speed in here. So I do think there, if he's ever going to get a chance to stay the trip, this might end up being it. Protonico's a really nice horse, no shame at all in finishing ahead behind him and beat Honor Code in that race, who of course has come back now to win the Met Mile. Um, the, you know, the only other horse who I think is a really a big threat to Noble Bird would be Commissioner. I can't, you know, I think he was the class of the field in the Pimlico Special, but I definitely think the track was speed favoring that day, so that certainly helped him when he rode pretty close to the speeds there. I'm not sure that this track will play that way, so at a short price, I'm going to take a stand against him. So, Noble Bird on top for me. As far as something underneath, I'm not completely against Cat Burglar. I think he's going to get a little bit ignored here after losing his first two races off of a very long layoff, but he was a very quality horse last year, looked up lots of potential, and I think in both of these races, you can find excuses as to why he didn't run to his best, should get a, you know, a decent enough setup here, running, like, not, he's not on the speed, but close to it, but I don't think will be an extremely fast pace, so Noble Bird on top, perhaps Cat Burglar to offer a little bit of value underneath. Yeah, the speed horses in this race are, you know, Commissioner likes to run on the pace, but he doesn't have speed. Mm -hmm. He's kind of just that that front runner that he'll grind away. And, and some of his best races have been on lead, but they've been slower fractions. So I think Noble Bird is kind of hitting his form cycle. Um, Majestic Harbor goes back to the dirt after that kind of bizarre chirp race last time where he kind of was up on the pace going a mile and a half. But that burglar I kind of like, uh, kind of to, to complete my exacta, I am going to pick Lee. I think he is approaching, you know, $2 million in career earnings. Some of that was bumped up by the third place in the World Cup. But he ran good that day considering he shipped over there. And he was up near the pace all along with California Chrome. He is kind of a win machine, and he does have a great one win at, uh, at, at the great class level. Um, they pointed for this race, but I think some of the value may be in Exactus. I think a Majestic Harbor may get overlooked, and I think Cat Burglar really was against the race flow the last time in that Pimlico race. So I'm going to play a uh, Opportunity second, Cat Burglar second, and Majestic Harbor second. Opportunity could go either way. He has a good recent work. So he has four workouts in May, but he did miss the Alex Sheba, and we're not really sure what happened there. But he does get Mike Smith in this race, one with him in the Grade 2 Rebel. Yeah, and as far as your top choice Lee goes, I would say that if you are a fan of his and you're looking to bet him here, I wouldn't be put off by that race in Dubai. I think he ran a very nice third there. It was a very kind of tiring surface that day. And I really had questions of him staying the mile and a quarter trip as it was. So I just look at it as he ran a good race. He just didn't stay the trip. And so this cutback should be perfect for him. Um, I, you know, he's a horse who I think sometimes can be a little bit overrated, but perhaps, you know, as far as betting is concerned, but I think with the other big names in the field, he, he might end up being a more playable prize. Yeah, and he does tend to, you know, even when he uh, doesn't win, he runs a good race, and sometimes you need to look, like, I think that 10 for long race kind of does set him up for it, if, you know, he's kind of been training for this race since then, mm -hmm. so um, I don't think Mott would run him if he at all was not near 100%. Because he's a little bit older, and I, and I think they're uh, only going to run him in races that he figures he can be in there. Um, Commissioner, it'll be interesting to see if he doesn't get the lead, if he can kind of outclass some of these horses and plug along. Um, I'm not going to be playing him, but uh, I mean, I can see the logic. Although I do think they wanted to wait for the Suburban. Then when Protonico had the, uh, got a little bit of the, the stable, got a little bit of the flu going around, so he kind of skipped this race and they kind of plugged Commissioner in. So... I'm not really sure they were pointing for this race, but uh, he does seem to have the stamina and he does have the pay grade. I don't know if he has the raw speed to kind of quicken on the front end. So should be a, a lively edition of the Foster. And I think whoever wins this race kind of, you know, shoots to definitely the top seven or eight, uh, one of the top seven or eight older horses. Then immediately after um, the Foster under the lights, they run 
a three-year-old stake race, which, you know, this time of the year, there's a, you know, start to get ready for the midsummer races, including the West Virginia Derby and the Iowa Derby. And I thought this drew a matched competitive field. I think it did. I think, you know, this is a race where pace, I mean, pace always makes the race, but even more so, it's going to be really key here. I look at Fame and Power, who ran, uh, I thought was his best race to date last time out. Um, at Pimlico on the Preakness undercard when winning there as Lone Speed. I think he's Lone Speed here again. I look for him to, you know, really get the set up and take advantage of it. I think he's an improving horse and he seems like this, you know, distance isn't too far for him. And, you know, so long as I think he's untouched out front, he's one who seems to have the ability to relax on the lead, which is always a dangerous weapon. Um, a few other horses in here are interesting, maybe more underneath. Um, I liked Phenomenal Phoenix going into the Illinois Derby. I thought he was a little bit disappointing to me there. Even though he had some trip troubles early, I thought pace-wise he really got the setup and wasn't able to take advantage. Um, Bold Conquest ran a nice second to payment power. He's actually one I wouldn't plan on using just because I don't think that there is going to be enough pace in here for him to reverse that form and he has a horse who just really tends to take money aside from when he ran against American Pharaoh who took all the money himself. Um, it's also interesting here, I'm seeing in my notes for my past performances too, that private prospect who's in here who ran, also ran the Illinois Derby like Phenomenal Phoenix is also cross-centered in a race at Canterbury. So if you like him, one to keep an eye on to where he actually runs. Yeah, I thought the pace scenario may shape up a little bit different this time. Uh, Phenomenal Phoenix, both his, his two wins have been wire to wire, and he drew the rail. Now he does have a new trainer, um, and he gets Joel Rosario in the ride, which I thought was a little bit interesting. So I think with him at the rail, he'll show and maybe send a little bit. Uh, jockey switch for fame and power to Espinoza, and then Henry Jones, who has done his best running, he gets Mike Smith, and I think if he kind of goes, uh, a little bit more ascent this time rather than rating in third. That could soften it up a little bit. Um, ultimately, I went with Island Town, who two races back, uh, three horses came back to win out of that uh, two weeks off race. Now, two weeks off has kind of regressed since then, but I do think that that was a key race at the time. The speed figure came back really high, and visually it seemed good. Uh, I just think Wilkes, you know, he kind of runs well at Churchill and uh, – Keeneland. So I just think this horse, if, if he gets a pace, uh, may float up in odds and he might win this type of race. Yeah, and he's the type of horse too. I think his form was also boosted by a couple other horses who ran behind him last time out, one of which was Louis Vaporize, where he finished third to him in his most recent race. He since has come back to again run third, this time behind Spates turn joking on the Belmont undercard and I thought both those top two looked like very smart progressive individuals so that certainly does nothing to hurt Island Helen's form. Bold Conquest you know I think after facing American Pharaoh um, especially since what Mario Conferro has done um, he's eligible to improve a little bit because he finally got down to his class level and the last time uh, you know fame and power just didn't come back to him if the track's not playing as kind of speed or if he doesn't get the same kind of splits he could maybe cut into that three, you know, three and a half length deficit if, and with a better uh, pace trip. I think so. I just think he needs pace, and that's why I'm not using him because I don't think he's going to get it. But should he get pace, he seems like an honest enough type who really runs his race every time, and just sometimes he gets to set up and sometimes he doesn't. So what type of uh, wagers do you think uh, fame and power is usable on, and how are you going to kind of use a horse like that? <laughs> For me, I mean, he's obviously going to take the money here. I expect him to go up as a heavy favorite. He would be a horse who I, because he's singling in, you know, in the middle of a pick three or at the end of a double, just because I do think I could use him with Noble Bird, who I don't think will take a ton of money. I could see using Noble Bird and Cat Burglar into Fame and Power and, you know, maybe getting, you know, that way kind of getting a little bit more of a price off of Fame and Power than I would should he just win or make a win bet on him. Um, I think, I don't think he's, you know, really playable keying him on top just because I do think this race is, you know, fairly logical. I expect it to be fairly chalky all the way through top three finish. Um, I would more be using him as a single and multiple race wagers. 
Yeah, I think Kylan Town, you know, he's going to be uh, definitely on a couple just daily double tickets. I do think he's usable second and third. And, uh, you know, I think definitely in the exact bottom half, if you, if you like the power and, and possibility, you know, I still think Henry Jones, maybe if he shows a little bit more speed, possibility could kind of clunk up for third or fourth as well. So to me, it's kind of more of a spread a couple of horses on top and then there's a couple of horses second and third. And I think Island Town is definitely usable. And, and I can make a case for Phenomenal Phoenix, especially at the rail and if he's given an aggressive ride. Mm -hmm. But he's another one that could run out of the money. I saw that's so why I'm going with Island Town because he may not win, but I, I do think he fits with this group and he may be a little bit overlooked on the wagering. So we get the uh, grade one on the turf. We get a win in your end for the classic. And then uh, the Matt win should set us up for a few of the midsummer derbies. I guess, which of the three are you probably the most confident on in your selection? I would say that I'm the most confident on the Shoemaker Mile, which we discussed first, just because I think, you know, Talco does kind of have a little bit of some hidden trip notes there. And even if he doesn't win, I expect him to go very close. He is a horse who doesn't seem to throw in a lot of clunkers and a horse who I think even last year we saw was really coming around to being at this sort of a level. So I think a big performance from him has kind of been a long time coming. I guess of the three for me, I'm probably the most confident in Lee. And I just think Island Town is kind of one of those horses you can sneakily put him in second, third, fourth, and, you know, run a couple of daily double tickets and just see if the price is right. Um, but, you know, Tote Board will ultimately tell the tale on, on if, he, if he's even playable and you know, exotics. But I do think he'll be seven or eight to one, and that's usable as a second or third place horse. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting closer to some of the, uh, you know, we get into the summer session now, and in a couple of weeks, I know we'll be going to uh, Iowa to the uh, summer racing festival. So stick around as we kind of turn the corner and we turn from the Triple Crown and start leading the run up to the Breeders' Cup. That's going to do it for Sammy, Captain with Candace, and myself on another edition of Down to the Wire.